millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. We don't care if we win or lose or draw. It's all the same to us. For football, in particular grassroots show. football, what the is the reality? How important is it? So Funded by the FA, the Premier League and the government, yeah, what is the effect on these teams? In 2022, the government announced it would invest £230 million into grassroots football. How much, if any, of this has filtered down to the clubs that really need this? Paul Collins caught up with Hayley Doris from Three C's in Birmingham to give us the lowdown on what it's really like. We don't care if we win or lose or draw. It's all the same to us. Because for all we know that there's going to be a show and the good old free seas will be there. So follow them up, follow them up. That's the way to win the cup. <laughs> Good evening, Paul. And welcome all to a chapter of my life. I'm joined today by Hayley Doris, although her nickname's Muggin, the DJ. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, firstly, Hayley, you, you're on here to talk about three C's, which are the most romantic junior kids football team in Chamsley Wood. Were you born in Chamsley Wood, by the way? I was, yeah. yeah. Marston Green Hospital. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, I was born... Um, I think I might have been born in Marston Green Hospital as well, if I'm honest. Many, many years before you, but I was brought up <laughs> in Kingshurst. So, first, before we get into the three Cs, let's talk about Hayley Doris and how you got into football and how you got into your role being uh, the Supremo at three Cs. Yeah, so um, I've always been, as a young girl, I love football. Dad took me down the blues, that kind of stuff. Um, but obviously, back, I was born in 83, so like, late 80s early 90s there weren't much around for girls girls who wanted to to play football it was still the stigma um which has changed massively now over the years um and when i was 16 because i enjoyed football uh paul drinkwater the great dinky yeah um yeah he approached me and he went hey the the three c's are putting on a level two coaching course for all the managers but we need more people to do it. It has to be full. I was like, yeah, not a problem. I'll, I'll jump on that. So for, for one evening a week, for about eight to ten weeks, I went at the back of um, St Anne's School and done the coaching course and passed it along with all the other managers, which was great. Um, and then shortly after I passed, they come to me because that was at a time, Paul, I don't know whether you remember, when we went to seven aside. So it yes, went do, from yeah. seven aside mm-hmm. down to seven aside. So it was sort of like 1998 time this was. And they said, Hayley, we've got a team. Our under sevens have now got to get to seven aside. But obviously we've got 16 kids because we had a 11 aside squad. Yeah. Will you come and help coach the B team? Um, we've got a manager, but we just need a coach. And because we've give you your coaching badges would you do it and I was 16 at the time and I said yeah not a problem um so we spent all the summer getting ready and then on the first game of the season because I was 16 I couldn't drive so my mum had to go and drop my brother to his game because he was in the A team and then drop me to my game I got a phone call from the manager saying I'm actually not going to manage I'm, I'm dropping out so I, there was me 16 year old me left with this little squad of 10 players um, and I just done it, Paul. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because that's what you do. Um, so I, I, I carried on with that team. I, I got an assistant in, one of the dads to help me. Um, and we carry, I carried that team through from under eight through to under 16s. Um, I mean, they're all in their early 30s now. Um, and then I had my own son while we was in the last year of playing with that team. So I, I took a break, a little break. It was only like 
five years because then Josh wanted to play football and his team was three C's. And I said, listen, I just want to be a mum. I want to be that mum on the sideline that doesn't have to worry about other people's children. I want to, you know. And Dave come to me after the first season and he went, Hayley, I can't manage this team. And if, if somebody doesn't take over, I'm going to fold it. Mm -hmm. So then I stepped in for my son's team um, and I took them from under eight then all the way through to under 16s. We lost... Mm -hmm. We finished two years ago um, and it was a fairy tale finish for myself, to be honest, because um, I'd won some leagues over the years with the boys and that. And um, I'd never won like an open cup or a league cup or anything. Yeah. And we were playing top of the league. We'd lost 7-0 and 5-0 in our home and away game. And we were bottom of the league and we only had 12 players because you know what morale's like at that mm. age when they're losing. And we went and won the Open Cup, Paul, on the last my last game ever managing, 3-1. Um, so, and it was just a great way to bow out. And then Bob at the time, Bob Elliott, the chairman, he he was stepping down because obviously Bob's like, I think he's early 80s. I don't yeah, want to be... Gonna say, he's got to be, he's got to yeah, be around that, yeah. he's early 80s. Yeah. Um, and he said, hey, I've got to step down. Like, I can't do it anymore. And I said, you know what? It's perfect timing. The lads are finishing. And I'll take over from from you. I just need to know, obviously sponge all your knowledge, um, and, but not to worry. We'll um, we'll keep it going. And that and that and now I'm chairman, uh, chair lady, chairperson, whatever is politically correct. But um, yeah, so I, I don't have to rush around with chaining balls and bibs like the guys do that every week. Um, I can do a lot of mine on the, my stuff on the phone and on the email. Um, but yeah, very much involved. Very much. Um, has visions for the club, yeah. So that's basically me and me and three C's. I'm 41 this month, so they've been in my life for a hell of a long time. <laughs> we don't do PC over Chamsey Wood or North So Little, as the Sillillians like to call us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back in time to when three C's were formed and why. 1971, I believe, wasn't it? It was, yeah. So um, we always call Arthur Farrell our great founder, but he was actually one of them. There was a group of them, him and him and a few of his friends. Um, and when we spoke to Arthur, he always said that in Ireland as a child, um, he wasn't allowed to play football. There was no teams as yeah. such. Um, so obviously he come over to, over to Chelmsley and he and he had his own children. Um, and in 1971, he decided to create the club to be able to give that opportunity to the children of Chelmsley Wood that he didn't have in Ireland. Um, and how grateful we are that he did uh, create our great club. Um, and it's still giving children opportunity to this day. Bless him. Now, the three C's, it was a uh, Catholic community centre. Is it still that or is it just three C's? I've noticed recently it seems to be the three figure, then the C's. But back when I used to play against them in the old uh, Castlevale Boys League, it was C, 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 and then the comma and the S. Is it still the same? Yeah, yeah. So literally, um, so we I always put C, 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 I do. For yeah, Catholic I do. Community yeah. Centre. Um, on our recent tournament, we have put the three and the C's, and that's purely to fit it all on, <laughs> to fit all the yes. information we need on, because a lot of people do say it as in the number three, three yeah. C's, but it yeah. is CCC, like you say, yeah, Paul. Or for lots of us, we've always called them the C's. The C's, yeah, definitely. Where do three C's run out of now, and did they not move out of Chamsley for some time and have been brought back? Yeah, so I think that was that was the problem we had, Paul, is that yeah. we was this massive club. I think the record number of teams we ever had at one time was 17 teams, yeah. and that was back when it was just boys' teams as well. That was no girls' teams. Um, and we used to play out of St Anne School and Archbishop Grimshaw School back then, which yeah. is now John Henry Newman. Um, and we played out of them them two schools. But obviously then St Anne's got a brand new building, didn't it? It was demolished and a brand new building. And they didn't really put much of um, a grass uh pitch on it as such so yeah. everybody moved to Grimshaw and then the decision was made um, I mean this was in the time when I'd just finished with Josh's end team uh, my first team and I was obviously in my motherhood days um, 
to go to Penn's Lane in Sutton because there was a ground there that they were willing to give us for free. Yeah. Um, and that was really our downfall. If we was to look back at it honestly, moving out of Chelmsley Wood allowed other clubs to pop up and grow on our turf in Chelmsley Wood, basically. Um, so like Arden Forest, for instance, when when uh, in the early days of Arden, when I used to manage, they were over Solly Hallway. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You mm. know, um, and it was like, back in the day, it was just three seas. King's Earth was just starting. It wasn't massive. Um, and uh, Martin Green. Green and mm. Chelsea Town was a, yeah. was a, was an entity then. Um, so, but now you've sort of got Arden Forest, you've got SJB, you've got Solly All Sporting, you've got a lot of uh, North Solly All, you've got a lot of clubs that now have popped up. And obviously, because we moved away, our bread and butter, Chelmsley Wood and surrounding area kids yep. went to them clubs. You know, mm. we wasn't seen as a as a Chelmsley Wood club anymore. Um, so when when the ground was um, the ground obviously was owned by um, I'm not too sure. I think it's the steel company up by Lee Village. It was owned by that that company okay. there. They sort of Alcan said. Booth. That's the one, yeah. Mm. Al- yeah, that's the one that I think they sold it to either Sutton United or Sutton, one of the Sutton. They okay. sold that land to them and they've now built AstroTurfs on that. But that meant we had to come back and obviously we're, a he- we're, we're catching up to everyone now. Do you know what I mean? So because of that. So how many teams have you got and you run it out of Archbishop? It's Newman, isn't it? It used to be Archbishop Grimshaw's in the olden days. Is that pretty much now where the Free Seas home is, Archbishop Newman's? Yes, yeah. yeah. So, um, so when I first when I come to be chair lady two years ago, Paul, we had mm. four teams. Yeah, we was down to four, and I have to say, yes, in hindsight, moving to Sutton was a bad thing and everything like that. But once we come back. Bob Elliott did a sterling job in keeping that club together because it, although it was only four teams, he could have quite easily have chucked in the towel and said, you know what, it's not worth it. And three C's would have just been gone. Um, but Bob, bless him, he carried it on. Um, and this season now, we are up to 16 teams now this season, boys and girls. We're all running out of John Henry Newman School, um, which is great because that, that was the school that all of our kids all, you know, everybody went to Grimshaw, everybody, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, it's nice to be back on Chelmsley. It's nice to be able to call somewhere home. Um, hope, I'm hoping in the future we can look at getting our own ground as such or a little bit of land um, that we can call home. Um, but, yeah, we're just looking forward to the new season with our 16 teams. When you look in a, a place that you can call home, I mean, that's going to cost an awful lot of money. I know that Marston Green at Gorsey Farm, I believe they're still there, uh, yeah. bought that. There is some land around the uh, that, that green belt, isn't there, around the NEC, around, uh, you know, our area, around the airport, coming into Chelmsley Wood, etc. But are the other, uh, Chelmsley Town, you alluded to them, are they still going? So they don't really they go as a Saturday team, but they've yeah. got a Chelsea Town Saturday team that do play at Chelsea Town. They play Coos on the Astro. Um, so really, um, Chelsea Town is just Piggy's that he's renting out to other clubs and he needs a bar as such. You're just breaking up a bit, Hayley. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're just breaking yeah. up a little bit there when we were talking oh, about Chelsea Town. Yeah, so it, it's literally their Saturday team play as Chelmsley Town, but they play at Coes or they don't play at the pitches at Chelmsley Town. So literally Chelmsley Town as a clubhouse and pitches rent out their pitches to other clubs. Got ya. So they don't have necessarily have any grassroots teams anymore. Yeah, got ya. Running a team is a labour of love. <laughs> it, really, <laughs> it really is very difficult at times. 
Running 16 teams has lots and lots of added additional problems. But how big do you see three Cs going and what kind of income streams do you have? Because it doesn't run on fresh air. Kids have to pay subs. You know, you've got merchandise, etc., etc. Tell us about that side. Because, again, the pitches back in our day, it always cost a few quid to hire the pitches out. I'm guessing now it's an astronomical amount to hire pitches out. So briefly talk to me about the, you know, the um, the fundamentalists of the uh, the finances. Yeah. So basically, um, parents do pay a sub, pay subs as they've always done. Yeah. Um, and then as a club, we try, we use opportunity. So obviously presentation nights, mm. Christmas parties, that kind of stuff to sort of boost of the club's pot as such and then mm. we sub- subsidise some of that yeah. um, and and help out um, but we run very differently as a club we do um, I know a lot of clubs around do so they, they take all the money off the parents and it goes into the main club and then the managers will come and say listen I need this I need that and the club mm. will buy it for them yeah. we don't do that so we have our managers run their own pot so they set the, the subs Mm. And then we as a club set like a monthly fee that the that the team have to pay us and that will cover pitches, um, affiliation, insurance, all of that kind of stuff that, that goes on in the background. And then the managers have their own kitty, so whatever they save up to, because at the end of the day, it is the parents' money. Yeah. It's not our money. Mm. It's the players and the parents. So and it's all transparent and visible um, in, in bank accounts in, in the three C's name. Um, and it's just basically then so that, you know, I used to take my lads for a Nando's every Christmas. You know, that was that, that was the way I spent the money. But, yeah, as a club, we do try and, we try and make it as cheap as possible. But like you say, with costs these days, um, it, it's not it's not a cheap game anymore. It's not a, a jumpers for goalposts kind of thing. Um, you know, every parent wants their kid to play on AstroTurf, do you know what I mean? Yes. That kind mm. of stuff. Um, so it, it, it is getting more expensive. Um, but as a club, we do try our hardest to try and keep that cost from not going back down to the parents as such, if you get what I mean. Paul. And in, in the winter time, do you still go inside? Uh, I'm going to call it Grimshaws because that's where <laughs> yeah. we used to go. Inside Grimshaws and use a sports hall because it is a great sports hall in there. Um, we use the Astro now because you don't believe use it or not, yeah. the sports hall is more expensive right, okay. than an Astro turf. It's mm. crazy. So our mini kickers, for instance, so we do our mini kickers on a Saturday morning. Um, in the winter, we do go into the sports hall because it's still too cold for them to do on an Astro. Sure. You're talking three or four year olds, aren't mm. you? So, um, so we go into the sports hall. These days? Yeah, yeah. So we start at three and four. Yeah, just getting them into football. Um, but it's forty pound for an hour for the sports hall, whereas yeah. the Astro Turf is twenty five for a quarter. Mm. So there's a big difference there. So, um, so yeah, so the sports hall, I, I don't know why, but it just costs more, and I don't mm. understand why. <laughs> do they still do a card at the three C's? And I, I know that they used to, and all of the managers used to give out on the training session the football scores for the weekend, uh, and you'd fill them all starts- in. Yeah, the yeah, big stars. Yeah, they no. <laughs> yeah. no, we don't. Oh, you know what, Paul? They, it gives me uh, PTSD, that does, because the amount of, I've had to fill out yeah. over the years just to hand in to Derek, because that was instead of the club's month, uh, monthly fee. Yeah, you'd, yeah, hand yeah. In, you'd hand in your 25 fixed odds a week, wouldn't you? Yeah. And if you couldn't sell them, you'd top it up out of your subs, if you get what I mean. Yeah. So I used to have to fill out loads of fixed odds. But yeah, no, we don't do that anymore. And I think purely it would be time-wise. I don't yeah, know how Derek, Derek done it back in the day, you know, checking hundreds of uh, fixed odds every week to see if we've got a winner. So, <laughs> And, and we used to, you know, years ago when, when I was a kid, they used to have a tote and uh, you used to pick numbers and you could have the numbers reversed, etc. I mean, I don't particularly know how it ran. I was about... 
10 when I started playing yeah. football at Marston Green. But I remember my dad and, you know, all the people, the managers that used to run the various teams, they used to have a night where they'd go and they'd do a tote night and they'd put all the money in there. I mean, things do change. And I think it's great that individual managers have got their own pot now that they can run their team. I remember when I ran a team, I go into a bit of hot water, David Gold, bless him, gave gave me a few quid and the the rest of the club wasn't too enamoured with, with it. <laughs> but, uh, but that's that's the way it goes. But uh, five sides are another great way of uh, raising revenue. I'm guessing that there's an awful lot of teams now that are doing the five side. But uh, three seas are doing one, aren't they, this year? Yeah, we've got it this weekend, Paul. Yep. So our first one, really, the last one we done was at Penns Lane, and obviously that was um, that was a hell of a long, long time ago. But no, we've managed. We're working in conjunction with John Henry Newman. Um, they've set up a charity called the St John Henry Newman Charity, um, and we're working together really. So we were making money out of the teams paying to come and stuff, but then we're going to be putting on like stuff for people to do while they're there and hopefully um the school's charity can raise a bit of money and that money's going to go towards like because our players are there so it's literally going to help yeah. our our players as well as as students but like um the matter who is the he's like the glue between uh three c's and the school he's like their community officer he said like he had a kid come who, who lost a parent um and trying to get in some bereavement counselling was like running through treacle yeah. and he said he wanted to create this charity so literally he could just go yeah there's the money we can pay for that kind of mm. stuff and I felt that was something that we needed to get involved in because like I say a lot of our children go to that school so we're sort of working together with him um, the club will make a lot of money and the charity will make lots of money so everyone's happy um, and every, everybody gets some out of it because, again, the football club is the heart of the community. And I keep on hearing these Premier League uh, people, um, and that's been kind to them, talking about <laughs> grassroots now, the money filters down. But the real grassroots, the likes of yourselves at Free Seas, you don't get any money, I'm guessing, that filters no. down to your football club. So when they say it filters down to the grassroots, it, it doesn't. I'm also guessing that the Central Warwick's, is that the league that you play in these days, doesn't get much or any money from these professional football clubs that are absolutely loaded as well? No, I don't think any of us do, to no. be honest, Paul. And that's why the league have to charge as much as they do. Yeah. So for, I mean, the, the girls' side's even worse, Paul. Like we pay £190 a team for the boys. But the girls go up to two hundred pound a team. Why? Sort of like exactly that was our question. It's a bit of in, in, you're trying to make equality, mm -hmm. but you're not making equality by charging a different price. Why? Why have girls got to pay pay more? Um, and these are the battles that we're facing at the moment. Is that we're, we're we're finding a lot of stuff is just it's not right and it's not done right either. And it, and the children are not at the heart of some of these decisions either. Now, you've had quite a few former players that have gone on and played the professional game. When you take and you've took two teams up to the age of 16, what happens then? Where do the boys go and the girls as well these days? Have you got any affiliation with some of the floodlit football clubs locally? Say, for instance, Kozel or I know Solil Moors are only down the road as well. No, it is something we're looking at, Paul. I mean, at least now you can go to under-18s if you want to. Oh, yeah. um, they do do an under-18s league. Um, but then, we're, as a club, we're not really interested in going further than that because it does yeah. bring on its own problems. But we are lucky in the fact that we are in a, a football-mad area, like I say. Tell me about it. Um, Solial Sporting, who are our other partners at John Henry Newman, they have got a very big uh, setup regarding the flood lifts, um, oh, yeah. you know, under 21s, that kind of stuff, yeah. um, and the men's team. We've also got the Trooper, who are the most, uh, are the best Sunday league team. My once next question, the that was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, they won the FIVRs, so they're the, the best Sunday league team in the, in the country after winning the FIVRs. Um, you know, Chelsea Town Saturday team, so we have got options for our players and that's what I wanted to work with like the the men's side of it especially to sort of make a pathway there for them Absolutely. Um, so if they want to the options there if you get what I mean 
I think that when people talk about hotbeds, I, I don't really think that they understand how, how big Chamsley Wood is. I don't think they realise how many kids that are natural born footballers that come from Chamsley Wood. And I think it's just a massive untapped area, really, of, of just so many brilliant kids of, you know, it's almost like, I mean, we have got our own, and I say we, because our Kingshurst, Chelmsley Woods, the same area. You know, we've got our own town centre. It's almost, it's almost like an its own little town, isn't it, Chelmsley? It is. Literally. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's it. And that's, I know, the three C's are a massive part of that mm -hmm. as well. No, when you think Chelmsley Wood and you think football, three C's is probably the one that um, pops up. I mean, my, I've got a disabled son, Bobby. Um, and Blue's got in touch with him because we went viral with a video that we posted in his walker. And they said, can the gaffer and a player come and see you? And I went, yeah, not a problem. So lo and behold, they send Troy, my mate. Yeah. So I'm like, so Troy knocks on my door and he goes, all right, hi. And he gives me a big love and he's asking about how the seas are and stuff. And then John Eustace comes in and um, we're talking about Bobby because that's the main reason why they're there. And then Troy goes, hi, how's it going at the seas? So I'm telling him. And John Eustace goes, I played against them when I was younger. And did. and Troy went, and he went, and we used to have right, right ruckers with them. They were a right hard side. And Troy went, you probably played against me, Gaffer, to be honest, because <laughs> I played at the free seas. And, and that's what we get. We get so many new players that come and go. Me dad played for free seas. Me granddad played for free seas. Me mm. uncle, you know, it's such a fam. It's if you're looking for plump lips that last, you need to know about Juvederm Lip Fillers. With Juvederm Volbella XC and Juvederm Ultra XC, your lip look, whether it's subtle or bold, can last up to one full year with optimal treatment and no additional maintenance. Find a licensed specialist and see if it's right for you at Juvederm.com today. That's J-U-V-E-D-E-R-M.com. Add fullness to lips in adults over 21 with Juvederm Volbella XC or Juvederm Ultra XC. Do not not use if you have severe allergies or a history of severe allergic reactions, or if you're allergic to lidocaine or the proteins used in Juvederm. Tell your doctor if you have a history of scarring or taking medicines that decrease the body's immune response or that can prolong bleeding. Common side effects include injection site redness, swelling, pain, tenderness, firmness, lumps, bumps, bruising, discoloration, or itching. As with all fillers, there's a rare risk of unintentional injection into a blood vessel, which can cause vision abnormalities maladies, blindness, stroke, temporary scabs, or scarring. For full, important safety information, visit Juvederm.com. Hey, I'm Ryan Reynolds. At Mint Mobile, we like to do the opposite of what Big Wireless does. They charge you a lot, we charge you a little. So naturally, when they announced they'd be raising their prices due to inflation, we decided to deflate our prices due to not hating you. That's right. We're cutting the price of Mint Unlimited from $30 a month to just $15 a month. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. So it's so embedded into Chalmsley Wood that you can't get away from it. There's people popping up everywhere that have something, have had some involvement within the club, which is great. I love it. Absolutely. And Dina, he was the same age group as my oldest lad. Uh, Mickey Galley's team, Galley's team. Yeah, um, bless his heart. Mickey, yeah. Mickey Gow is no longer with us, is he? One of the best managers to ever grace the three C's, I think. Absolutely. And Galley used to play Troy at right back. I don't know whether that was whenever I used to go and uh, run the ruler over him, and, and he didn't want me to see that Deeney was playing centre forward, so he, he played him <laughs> at right back. I, I don't know. But yeah. again, Troy's made a great career, and it started there at the three C's. Lee Carsley, another player that uh, played at Free Seas. And I think maybe the first player that turned pro was a young lad named Robert Kelly. I used to play against Bobby when uh, when we were kids. What other players off the top of your head have, have gone on to greater things from the Seas? Oh, I think you've mentioned them big two. Mm. Because Car Carsley, bless him, he, he's very much involved with us at the moment. Good. Um, so what we do is every every summer we have a sign. Last season I thought, you know what, I'm going to have a signing on day. Not many children get to sign and sit at a table with the parents and pretend to sign mm. for a pro club. They, they'll never see. It. There's a huge percentage of that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I said, and I don't want that for my 
my kids in my club. I want them to make them feel that like they're that special to us. Um, so we set up a signing on day. So we decorated a table with the banner, balloons, green and white everywhere. So the players would come in, sit with a committee member, show their passports or their birth certificates, and we'd sign them. They'd sign a code of conduct. Then they'd go and have a photograph at this table. And at this table, we had Arthur Farrell, Bobby Elliott and Lee Carsley, and they had a photograph of nearly every player yeah. that came through that door. Um, and then we had like a merch table and then a, ph a photographer there that would take individual ones. But Lee Carsley come up to me and he went, Hayley, this is brilliant, what are you doing? Um, and he went, and it's really special. And uh, ever since, we, I always WhatsApp him. So we had presentation night. He couldn't make it, but he sent a signed shirt for the, from the Euro uh, under 21 champions he sent a signed shirt for us to raise some money with um, and then I messaged him about the tournament um, but he's obviously heading to Germany with the England squad so he was like hey I can't come and I went no you're busy that's fine and his last message to me was hey keep doing what you're doing the three C's was a massive part of my life and don't underestimate what you and the guys are giving them kids they will remember this for their whole life um, and I just thought that was really powerful from someone who's now managing the next generation of England stars to come and tell us people from Chelsea Wood who are giving up our toy um, for these kids. I think he's, he's absolutely correct because, you know, all kids, no matter what level that you play at or you get to play at, you start somewhere. And like with Lee, it was at the free seas. In that iconic kit, you still wear the iconic green and white. Do you, do you still sing the old song, It's a Grand Old Team as well? Because that gets the airs on your uh, on your arms standing up when the boys are in the dressing room and they start singing that. Um, it's some of the, so Arthur came to our last, bless his heart, we lost Arthur in January, um, our great founder. But last year, uh, last year, he did come to our presentation night. And he did sing the song and everyone was like, what's that? And yeah. we was like, we can't be having that anymore. Do you know what I mean? We need everybody to know this song. Mm -hmm. And then lo and behold, we lost him. So then I had to get up three nights in a row and sing the song on the stage at the seas. Um, but more and more people now um, know the song. And it, it's great to see because, I mean, my brother used to live for that of a Sunday afternoon. Yep. Oh, we used to go back with the teams and it, the seas was absolutely packed out. You couldn't get a seat in it. And all the kids would stand by the stage waiting for Arthur to get up with his stick and start the song. And he'd bring two lads up. One would have to be the one crossing the ball and one would be the other one putting it in the net. And they used to be begging to be the ones that actually went up on the stage to him. So it is something we are trying to get back. Um, and, and when he, just before he passed, we did do, I'll have to share it with you, Paul. Yeah. Each team did like a sentence out of the song and we made it into the full song. So every every team in the club was singing the song basically for him. And while he was in hospital, they played it to him um, just to show like what he means to us really and what he will always mean to this club. I think that's the thing. You know, you never forget your foundations. You never forget those people that laid them foundations because it, the free seas are built on that. And you've got great links to, like, England's and the 21s. You've got links with, with the likes of Troy to the trooper, the, the super trooper, as you've alluded to, champions, yeah. Sunday League champions. And I've seen a few posts, and there's a few faces that are recognised uh, <laughs> from from there as well. Um, what So, your green and white shirts... Your, your kids that are playing small-sided, do they all play in the, the green and white from small-sided, from girls, all the way up to your under-16s? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so the, yeah. Only, the only team that doesn't is our mini-kickers, our under-fives. Yeah, got we you. We just that. get yeah. them a little training kit because it is quite an expensive kit for all the one we have because yeah, that was the one thing I did. I standardised the kit. Um before we was having people going and getting all different makes of it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And even some had zigzags on and I was like, we're green and white hoops. That is what we are. You know, when we turn off, people know you're the three C's from the green and white hoops. Yeah. So I went out and sourced what kit I wanted. And now that that's the rules. If people get a sponsor, they have to order the home kit from, from our supplier 
and it, everyone has the same one. Awake it, so I say, I don't care. You can have whatever colour you like, but you have to have this make, make of the, the hoops. Absolutely. It's got to be uniform because as soon as you see that, you think of the free seas. Because I, I don't recall many other teams, like junior kids teams, wearing that, I, that iconic shirt. No, I mean, the only one that's popped up is Holly Lane. Holly okay. Lane wear them, yeah. Um, that's the only one I know locally that wear the green and white. And Linden Colts are a small um, grassroots football. They have green and white as well. But like I say, if you see green and white in any pictures around this area, everyone automatically goes, it's the seas, you know, because it is that iconic. Absolutely. Going back to training and coaches, et cetera, and, uh, and managers, kids can't have the ball now. Is that something that's been bought in and you have to adhere to? How has that changed the dynamics of football? It's not going to be the small-sided, but certainly when they get to uh, under-11s, you know, you, you get the old wingers running down, or they used to get wingers running down the line, as you alluded to there. Someone crosses the ball and someone knocks it in, but you can't, <laughs> yeah. you can't knock it in with your head no more, can you? No, and they've banned throw-ins, Paul. I from, believe so. You've got to yeah, kick it in, haven't you? Allowed to do, you've got to do a kick in now because it can't be in the air for anyone to add at. Mm. Um, I, it's hard. I, I'm old school, I am. Same, yeah. and, and I loved header in a ball. That was one of my strongest attributes to my game Um, and I think you know what you're taking that away from some players they might not have the technical ability that some might have but you know what they can defend and they can head a ball and clear the lines and it's sort of I I find it a shame because again we're going I feel like we're just going a bit backwards and then you're going to get to a certain age and we've got kids who have never readied a ball yeah you know I'm just yeah and yet you're going to want them to be in a team like you say, where you're asking your wingers to cross it in, you're putting corners in, that kind of... Uh, yeah, I just find it um, a bit madness in this day and age, to be honest, to be able to, to, to just switch it like that or just start it from under fives so they know no different. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but if you're playing at the moment, you just carry on until you finish and then every team that comes in now, you bring in them rules. But to tell an under 10s team, so the under 9s, sorry, are going to under 10s. They'll have one season of kick-ins and then they're back to normal throw-ins. It just seems a bit a bit backwards. I think a lot of football is, is quite backwards. We jump on something and want to change everything. It's like the offside rule. I mean, I don't know what offside is and I don't know what handball is these days. I mean, as, no. a, as a, a junior club, that must cause untold arguments on the touchline. It's bad enough at the best of time with some teams and some parents, but that must just add to it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And when they can't even get it right at the elite stage, yeah. you know, how, how on earth is it going to be right at grassroots? Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's just uh, it's just the topic of um, down, down the pub, have a laugh at, really. <laughs> Absolutely. But again, the game has changed. It, fundamentally, it hasn't changed at all. But now do all the coaches that... So if anybody wants to come in and manage a free seas team, what level of coaching do they need to have? So, technically... They don't need any level of coaching. Okay. The three ba- the three basic things they need is a, a clean DBS, um, a first aid qualification, yeah. and the FA's first aid qualification, mm-hmm. and the FA's safeguarding children. They're the three main ones. Um, for your club to be affiliated, though, um, and get accreditation, yeah. you do have to have one member of the the management team having like a, an introduction to coaching they've, they've got a few levels now so you've got introdu- introduction to it used to be level one level two that kind of stuff but mm-hmm. now it's introduction to football um you've got the bt playmaker ua for c now i think has, has replaced the um the level two so it's all changed but yeah to, to get the accreditations you do have to have at least one member um, and as a club we're very forthcoming in paying for people to do that yeah. um, this year we had one of our managers apply for the UA for B um, and we said we'd contribute half of your cost to that because they ain't you, cheap are they no I think it was mm. 1500 pounds mm. it was for the UA for B and uh, Sean runs our under eights at the moment. And and Sean said, would you pay half? I? And I went, if you sign a bit of paper and say that you will see your under eights through to under 16s, I have no problem in paying you yeah. half, mate, because we'll get more than mm. that back yeah. off. Yeah. 
um, over them years and he was happy to do that because he said I'm sticking with them anyway so that's that was all fine to him but we are a club um, so this year we put three of our under 15s through the referees course because we, okay. we were sick of not getting refs so we yes. said you know what we'll pay for some of our players to go and do that course so three of them went off and done it um, and now they're the ones that are allocated to our little under sevens and eights and they're they're refing them before their game that's on the other side at, you know at, on the other pitch at john henry newman and jack bless his heart we nominated jack for um a referees recognition award and he went to wembley yesterday and won and won the club recognition award for referees um so it's just great that we're just you know we're growing our own now you know that kind of stuff because again, referees, it was always a nightmare in my day. It must be an absolute right ball ache these days trying to get hold of a referee. Like yeah. rocking all shit, ain't they? They are. And, and and to be honest, Paul, I understand why. Why would you want to put yourself through that? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the abuse you get. Uh, I, it's one of the things that I'm really strict on that, mm. like, we, nobody should be even opening their mouths to a referee because without them, the game doesn't go ahead. Correct. Um, you know, so I'm really strict on that and it's something I'm passionate about and it's something that we're going to follow through as a club. So every time a team reaches under 15s, we will put certain players through their courses to be able to just give back and earn a bit of money for themselves. So, no, it, it's it's a job I wouldn't want to do. I'd rather I'd rather be chairman of five clubs than than a uh, referee one game, to be honest. <laughs> I think I'd rather I sit there and have pins stuck in my eyes than be a referee, if I'm honest. <laughs> That's it, but yeah. Birmingham County FA, um, what's their involvement with the, the clubs these days? Because you, you can have different levels of, 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 of stamps, isn't it, really, that they'll say, you're a foundation club, you're a this club, you're a that club. Or well, they certainly did in my day. Is it different today? They have um, different charters, don't they? Yeah, so it was the chartered standard. It's now accreditation now, and you can either have one star, two star, and three star, and it all depends on what pathways you can develop in. So um, we're a one star, so that means we've got a boys team um, from the ages of seven to 16 as such, yeah. um, and you get one star for that. We've now got the girls' teams, but in order to get a two star, I've got to have a girls within the 15 to 16 bracket, which I haven't got yet, do you know what I mean? Because we're starting them off young. Yeah. And then the third star is your men's and your women's team, basically. You can you can go on. But this also includes disability football, um, oh. which is something that I, we are planning on bringing to the seas. We are going to look at some disability football. And so we're just fully inclusive for everybody in our area. There's no child that's left out i mean especially my son bobby he's he's disabled um and he's uh, he won't be interested at the moment mm. do you know what i mean he, yeah. can't, he, he can't stand it um he just wants to run on the pitch and be a hooligan but um <laughs> it is something that i'm thinking you know what we've got a lot of children with learning disabilities now in this yeah. day and age um you know an autism um the percentage is a lot higher and and the severity of it is a lot is a, is a lot more um so it is something that we are looking into once we've embedded all the girls teams we are looking at a disability team but i don't think we'll ever get to three star because i don't want to do the adult side yeah. of it i want to do just the kids um so so yeah we're not really just as long as we get our one star and we're accredited and we can put that next to our badge we're not we're not one of these clubs that want to show off with three stars as such, you know, we just want to make sure what we're doing is right now um, and, and good for the kids, basically. Absolutely. Your socials are very important. So let's have your social media if people want to get in touch with the free seas. And also the groups, because there's a lot of kids' groups, isn't there, football groups on social media where you can put posts in and if you're looking for a goalkeeper, for instance, if you're looking yeah. for different teams, need different players, it's very good. In our day, it was like, who, who's your mate at school? <laughs> yes, and you bring yes. them. Well, if you can't, like, kick a ball properly, you go in goal. You know, we used to do things in, like, analogue in our days, but it's very different now, it's digital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we've um we've got our own facebook page it's called ccc football 
um, that we, we're constantly posting on. It is a private group, so you have to answer a few questions to be able to get in. Um, but that way we can advertise for players within our own group as such, because what we're finding is now, Paul, like back in the day, People have got a, a, a kid who plays for the under 10s, a daughter who plays for the under 7s. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're constantly now getting mm -hmm. new players in and gone, hang on a minute, his brother's five. Have you got a team for him? So yeah. we do get a lot of, um, we do get a lot that come through that. We mm -hmm. have um, our email address, which which everybody can email, which is um, CCC Football at outlook.com but we we tend to use a lot of like that like you say the b37 updates on facebook that yep. kind of stuff yeah. we post a lot onto their castle brom ones you know all the surrounding areas just advertising for players hoping just that you know even if that one kid sees it and comes along to a session and enjoys it that, that it's done its job then and the school the the intake to play for say say the under eights then it has to be the school year now, doesn't it, of what those under eights are? When it be, yeah. I don't know, year three, year four. I, 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 my maths isn't very good, and it's yeah. a long time <laughs> since I was at school, or my youngest daughter now is leaving school. <laughs> but um, in our day, you had to be at a certain, you had to be, say, seven years of age till a certain date. So there were a number of kids that if you were the youngest in the next age group, you could play the year below. You yes. can't do that now, can you? No, no. So it is, it is just the year groups now. Yeah. And I'm like you, Paul, I'm old school. So mm. when people go, he's in year seven, have you got a team? Yeah. I have to count out. I have to go five. Yeah. I have to count it all out. Whereas I'm, I'm old school and I go, right from September, what age is he turning in that school year? And she'll go, oh, he'll be nine in October. And I'll go, right, he's under nines. Then he's the under nines number. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a role. I still working it out with school years. But, yeah, you are correct. It is, is the school years. And it's whatever age they're turning within that year that, that that's what team they're in. So if they're turning seven, they're under sevens, turning eight, under eight. And it's the whole of the school year, a yes, bit different yep. to what it used to be in our yep. day. Also, there was a great little um, series on recently, This Town, about Scar and growing up in Chelmsley Wood in the, uh, in the 80s. Has that had any effect to the free seas? I mean, certainly the trooper, I've seen the happy <laughs> yeah. trooper there, and I'm guessing they had a little bit of, uh, of a, you know, kind of fallout from that. Yeah, no, we haven't felt anything from it, to be honest, Paul. Mm. Um, like I say, I think we were all glued wanting to see the Happy Trooper because I've heard of, my mum and dad used to permanently live there when before I came along, I think. And uh, and it was nice when I heard, oh, they're doing a pub about it, to finally see where they were all weekend before I was uh, <laughs> before I was born. But no, we, we, didn't, we didn't really have any, we didn't really see an impact of it from the, from the seaside. I mean, it was one hell of an iconic pub in Chelmsley Wood. I was never brave enough to go into the Happy Trooper, but I know, <laughs> I know lots of them that did. But, you know, the, the fallout that I got from it, or, you know, people would go on social media and comment. And, you know, it's almost as though they thought that it was a documentary. Like they thought they think Peaky Blinders is a documentary. Yes, yeah, it's a figment it. of somebody's imagination. That's it. You know, that's and. It. And, and it doesn't have to exist these days, kids, but uh, it is written by the great Stephen Knight. Um, yes. And, you know, This Town was, I think, a great series, and I think it really portrayed Chelmsley Wood in a positive manner, unlike certain other things that they've done in Chelmsley Wood that haven't <laughs> been perceived in the same positive vibe. <laughs> Hayley, it's been an absolute pleasure. I think we've covered a lot of ground. Is there anything that you would like to talk about that we haven't? And I'm going to leave the final word to you. No, but I think we've covered everything. I've had a right trip down Memory Lane, to be honest. Fixed odds yeah. and going back to the seas, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But no, I'm just, um, I'd just like to finish on that the seas are back. Um, we're hoping to be the great club we was once um, again. We've got fantastic managers that are coming in, in now, um, a fantastic committee, and every single one of them want to benefit the children of Chelmsley Wood and surrounding areas. So if anybody's got 
any child in their in their family that wants to even try football or come along we are there for them and we don't say no to kids even if we haven't got room in our teams you can still come and train you can still come and put your boots on and feel part of a team in a community um, and that's what we're about absolutely that was a fantastic way i always say finish on a good and and you can't get any better than that Ailey. that's absolutely super by the way where did maggie come from so uh, my dad's called my dad's john morgan so um, okay yeah so they were all called maggie there was lee morgan john morgan um so all of them so i, I just got the nickname maggie as well so <laughs> so yeah just a family thing fair play i thought it was after a cat uh, yeah, yeah, probably was, but for one of them back in the day. <laughs> well, one of the one of the one of the lads that uh, that I do a podcast with, his his mom's name was was Mog. He used to call, his, his dad used to call him Mog. I said, "Hey, hey was that Al?" He said, "I don't know, but behind every successful man, there's a cat." <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that pool all day long. <laughs> Absolutely. Cheers, mate. Speak soon, yeah. and I say anything I can do to uh, be of any help to three C's, just uh, give us a shout. No, appreciate your time, Paul, and I'll see you soon. You're going to pop down Saturday? Uh, I'm working. I work every Saturday these days now. Yeah. But oh. I, I know Jack's uh, getting quite excited. and oh, he'll be... He's on the ceiling, mate. Yeah. I've had messages off him saying, I can't wait for Saturday. Can't wait for Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> little, little Jim's practicing in his garden as well, so bless yeah. him. But I definitely... But sorry? But that's a great thing, I think, you know, Paul. If you look at our managers now, if you was to come to a manager's meeting... Mm-hmm. More than half are ex-players, yeah. so they're coming back, you know, they're coming back to us. They know what the old days were like and where we're trying to get, um, and, and that's that's what we want. That The likes of Jack is perfect exa- examples of what we need in our club, you know, someone there for the right reasons. Absolutely. So, so I will be there. Um, I'll be there in spirit, not in, uh, in person <laughs> Saturday. But I yeah. definitely will be on the touchline on a number of Sundays uh, watching the seas like I'll uh, have to pop a few years and ago. Just, uh, and just say hello then, mate, when Absolutely. you're there. Absolutely. I'll yeah. buy you a beer. <laughs> that, that's a deal. <laughs> OK, <laughs> then, right. mate. All right, then, Paul. Thanks Take for care. your time and good luck to yeah. everyone. Bye-bye Thank now. Bye, Bye, Ailey. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Can you give us a song then to finish on? Uh, let, let me get outside when I've got better signal. <laughs> right, we ready? Yeah, go on, Maggie, give us a song. We don't care if we win or lose or draw, it's all the same to us. Cause for all we know that there's gonna be a show and the good old free seas will be there. So before the match was over, before the whistle blew, your man got the ball and up the wing he threw. He crossed it into pawn and in the net it flew. Another goal for free seas before the whistle blew. It's a rare old team to play for. It's a rare old team to know. If you only know your history, it's enough to make your hearts go whoa. We don't care if we win or lose or draw. It's all the same to us. Cause for all we know, that there's going to be a show and the good old free seas will be there. So follow them up, follow them up. That's the way to win the cup. Superb. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, my neighbours must think I'm Barbie in the garden just thinking. <laughs> Whether you're a morning person or a bedtime procrastinator, everyone deserves a mattress that works for their style. And you'll find the best mattress for you at Ashley. The new Temper Adapt Collection at Ashley brings you one-of-a-kind body-conforming technology, making every sleep tailored to be your best. The collection also features cool-to-the-touch covers and motion absorption to help minimize sleep disruptions from partners, pets, or kids. Shop the all-new Temper Adapt Collection at Ashley in-store or online at ashley.com. Ashley, for the love of home.